Welcome to episode 14. I'm Sean Deedle and this is the Purpose Driven Funnels Show. I'm embarking on a journey to grow a successful online business so I can break free from my 9 to 5. The question is, how will I do it? Find out right here on the Purpose Driven Funnel Show where you will get an insider's view as I interview experts who have succeeded. I'm doing it because my why is bigger than my 9 to 5. Life is meant to be a joy, not a chore. Will you join me? Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash purpose-driven-funnels. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Well, Kamaya is a social media business strategist and Facebook ads manager helping impact-driven entrepreneurs attract and convert qualified leads. And I'm really excited to have her on the show today. Welcome, Kamaya. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, it's great. Uh, I'm really excited to hear uh, more about your story. I know that uh, you know, you've, you've got a business kind of going for a couple of three years now, and you, you're starting mm-hmm. to really generate some momentum there. Mm-hmm. But uh, kind of just tell us a little bit about your, just how you got started in, in your own business. Okay. Um, So I actually come from a long line of entrepreneurs. However, I um, started working in corporate America. Um, And one of the reasons why I decided to go into the entrepreneurship world is because I think it allows me to have more, it will allow me to have more freedom and to accomplish more of my goals and one of my goals have always has always been to make a difference in helping um, women and children in a country that I grew up in, which is Ghana, West Africa. So that was the main reason why I decided to jump into the entrepreneurial world. <laughs> awesome. So what so what made you go in the direction that you decided to take with it with the you know, social media business strategy and all that? So um, I took, I, I, while in university, I took a marketing class up and, um, you know, we had to do websites, HTML, CSS, and then also we took marketing classes. Um, and I really, really loved the whole idea of marketing, um, but they didn't really teach us social media. So, you know, through the course of researching online, I started to learn more about social media and loved it. And I started thinking I would love to have my own nonprofit organization, but that takes money, right? Sure. (laughs) Um, And a whole lot of work to get it started. And so I was thinking, how can I make the biggest impact like immediately? And I decided, you know what? I love social media. How about I help companies that are also trying to make an impact in the world with social media, because then what that will do is not only does it help me help them get their message out um, and help more people to learn about what they're doing, you know, to make the communities better, but it also gives me a share in having my hands in impacting more people using digital marketing. So that's how I ended up getting into social media and Facebook ads. So it sounds like what your kind of business niche is, is helping kind of like people similar to you where they have a particular mission. So this really sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, that mm-hmm. that you're kind of focused on, you know, that's kind of your purpose to, to help impact the world in positive ways and to help others that are wanting to do the same thing. Is that right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I feel by me having clients that are aligned with me in the sense of wanting to make a difference in the world. And it could be, and it could be various ways that they're trying to impact the world, make a difference. Um, it helps me reach even more people. So not only will I be able to help my clients, but then also 
um, this business that I'm going into will also help me in the future also have my own nonprofit. So sort of two ways that I'm able to make a difference, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. It's like uh, getting two bangs for your buck, so to speak, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so rewarding. It really is. That's awesome. Yeah, I hadn't really come across too much of that. So that that's a very interesting uh, point that you come from. And no doubt there's a, there's a lot of people out there trying to impact the world. So we definitely mm-hmm. appreciate all that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, what, we know we were talking a little bit, you know, kind of offline before. And one mm-hmm. of the things that I was really interested in finding out more about you is because, you know, you do have this business going. Like I said, you were gaining some momentum. You got some uh, clients that you're serving and everything. Mm-hmm. And, but you still have a full-time job. So kind of you're in that transition phase right from going from your full-time job building that business to kind of basically remove yourself from that full-time job eventually so can you just tell us a little bit about like how you got where you're at right now like how did you get that business going what were the struggles that you encountered um, when trying to launch a business with a full-time job sure um although i come from a family of entrepreneurs it's a totally different era having an online business and so you know I work full-time because I still have to pay the bills <laughs> um, so I had to I had to kind of work during the day at my regular job and then in the evening time um, start my business um, because it was a new a new avenue for me. I had to figure out how to go about starting this online business, which required me to take a lot of courses um, and network and network. And so by networking and getting more familiar with others who have the same goals and aspirations as me, um, we're starting an online business. We sort of were able to um, guide each other and help each other to start this business. I found a mentor online and uh, she was a mentor for um, social media managers. And yeah, that's how I was able to at least get started. Some of the challenges that I faced was being able to balance my time because I felt like I was, you know, during the day, there are only 24 hours in a day, right? So I have my work and I have to be focused 100% for my job. Um, from nine to five. And then at home, I had to balance finding time to work and to get my business going. And also at the same time, keep up with my um, family responsibilities. So it was definitely, um, it's definitely a challenge because you have to be very, very strategic (laughs) with your time and um, make sure that you're focused And uh, the one thing that helps me is always thinking, what is the one thing I can do to move the needle in my business? Um, And so initially, I remember all I wanted to do was everything. um, And you can't do everything. And so throughout the years, one of the things that I learned that was most important was to be able to write down what my goals are, say, for the next 90 days. And um, specifically, each day, make sure that I am reaching whatever I'm doing is helping me get that much closer to that goal. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It makes complete sense to me. I mean, I know as an entrepreneur myself, you know, I'm always struggling with, you know, what needs to be done at the moment, but uh, can you just kind of maybe give us some insights on how it is that, you know, during that time that you have, you know, that limited time where you're working on your business, how do you stay focused on you know what what you need to do for your business and just talk to us a little bit about that process sure um it wasn't always where I focused on the one thing i I will admit in the beginning it was a bit overwhelming because I didn't know where where to start and I kind of was making everything a priority but after being in this for three years um, I heard Stephen Larson uh, say something that was that that was profound for me and that was 
you just need to, once you decide what your goals are, so say maybe it's you want to do sales, uh, you want to get more clients because you want to build your revenue, then the most important thing for you to do is to do something every day that's going to help you reach that goal. So whether it's to reach out to um, five new people a day and network, whether it's to go into LinkedIn and to do your videos, um, you have to have that one big overarching goal and focus on that each and every day versus having five different goals, which is what I used to do, which was, oh, I need to get my website up. I need to uh, get sales and I need to learn how to, I don't know, do like, I need to learn something that has absolutely nothing to do with sales. Um, Then you're stretching yourself thin when you already have very limited um, hours in the day to focus on what you need to um, focus on. So yeah, the one thing I've learned after being in this for three years is to really, really just focus on what your priorities are for the next 90 days and to set goals each and every day to try to reach that goal. There's a, um, a book I read called The One Thing, and that book also helped. So yeah, I found that to be a game changer for me and moving the needle in my business. And then also the other thing that I've learned to do is to really try and make my time count. So sometimes I I find I used to sit at my computer for hours and hours, especially on the weekends. And I found that um, the longer I sat without breaks, I was very, uh, I wasn't as productive as when I would say, okay, for the next hour, I am just going to focus on reaching out to five people and providing um, value, whether it be going inside of a Facebook group or whatever. And I would set um, a Pomodoro calendar um, clock. It's, I think it's like a, a Chrome app. And you can set it for 20 minutes or 60 minutes or whatever. Um, and so I would set it for 20 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever I decided I wanted to do. And I would just focus and work on that one thing. And once the 60 minutes was up, then I would take a little bit of a break, whether it was to, you know, step away from my desk, go for a walk, walk my dogs, or, you know, do something in the kitchen, um, maybe for 15, 20 minutes. And then I would come back. I found when I did that, I was so much more productive than when I would just sit straight through for like five hours at my desk. Um, And that also was a game changer for me. Yeah, I have heard about that Pomodoro method when I was in college, you know, where you, you, like you were talking about, set a period of time to, to do a task and then take a walk away, like take a break and, you know, do something else for a while and come back. I know me, you know, a lot of times I think that, if I take that time away, you know, take a break from it and I try to come back, that I'm going to somehow lose that momentum. But if I'm hearing you correctly, you were saying that it actually helps you? Yeah, exactly. Because then, well, for me, you know, different things work for different people. But for me, I found that when I had, say, an hour to get something done, I was a bit more focused and less distracted with checking my Facebook. You know, I would shut down my my Facebook. <laughs> I would shut down anything that would be distracting. And I, I, I said, within this one hour, this is what I'm going to do. And so that's what I mean, that it helped me be a little bit more productive because the days that I would sit, and go say for two, three hours straight working on something. I, you know, had my Facebook up and someone would pop up and send me a message and then I would stop doing what I'm doing. And then I would reply to that. I was doing too much. Um, I was multitasking and multitasking, although I thought that was a great thing for me, I found really wasn't um, as productive as when I just focused on that one task for a certain period of time and knocked it out, um, I actually found myself way more productive doing it that way. And I'm not saying that there aren't days that I do more than an hour or two, but I really do try, um, you know, when I'm on it to stick to that method and I actually get way more accomplished um, done doing it that way versus not having a plan. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So. 
you know, obviously, you know, in a business, you know, the, you've got, you know, your most important things you've got to do, right? Like, for example, uh, you know, getting more sales. And, of course, you know, with the limited amount of time that you have in, you know, doing those things, there's also a lot of those other uh, administrative things that, you know, that we have to attend to as well, right? So Mm -hmm. what I'm kind of wanting to find out from you then is, you know, those other tasks like, you know, getting your your marketing together or, you know, doing whatever other administrative things that aren't really necessarily your one thing, you know, how how do you fit those into your schedule or how do you handle those? Yeah, so that's that's the really challenging part is because my time is so limited, right? I only have from five until like about, well, 11 at night um, to get personal and my, my side gig, um, going. So what I try to do is I've, and I'm still perfecting this. <laughs> I think as an entrepreneur and in life, nothing, you never get everything right all the time. It's a, a work in progress. So <laughs> right now, what I find that, um, is helpful is I'm dedicating days for certain things. So say for example, on Monday, Monday is going to be my day to work on, um, my website or, you know, cause I'm still working on getting my web- website up and running. Um, or it could be, um, billing or, um, the weekends are the days that I, because I have longer time to focus are the days that I work on my client work. Um, and what I want to start implementing is, um, visibility, which is writing more. I have not, you know, done writing, you know, I need to do more writing because visibility is everything, especially when you're a new entrepreneur. And so that actually is on my 90 day goal for this quarter is to get more visible. So I need to set time aside for that. So because my time is limited, I basically try each day to, um, focus on something. So social media obviously is an everyday thing for me. Um, and it's maybe an hour or two that well, actually is probably an hour that I focus on social media. And then maybe another hour is working on, like I mentioned on Mondays, I'm working on my website. So I'm taking on that project of getting that tweaked and fixed. And then Tuesday, you know, is my day to take care of, you know, another task. So that that's what I'm trying to, to work on. It's, it's certainly not perfected, but, um, so far, it's going good by actually just doing blocks of time for specific tasks. So it all goes back to writing down. No, it all goes back to really figuring out what is it that you need to get done for this quarter, right? So you have your big goal. Then you have to break it down into little blocks and you have to say, okay, what do I need to do to get to make that big goal? And so when you break down those little blocks, those are the things that you can then use to schedule out on your calendar to focus on getting something done to reach that. So say if I wake up this morning and I say, okay, I need to, my priority for today is I need to get a blog out. I need to finish uh, content for um, my client for the next two weeks or, you know, um, do their Facebook uh, creation. I I write down what I did, what it is that I need to do. I, I listed based off of what's the most important, what's the most crucial down to the one that's least crucial. And I just start knocking it out. You know, uh, the most important thing, I take care of it. And then I try to get it all done. And if I can't get it done because I've prioritized it, the one that's like number four is the least. And then I can just move it on to the next day. So I hope that that, that's what I try to do. Check back with me in six months. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure I'll hopefully perfect it even more. (laughs) Yeah, so I, I have um, actually read that book, The One Thing, before. It's been a while, and you know there are some definitely good uh, concepts and stuff in there. Yes. And uh, I think that after listening to you, I probably need to go back to that book and probably reread it. Yeah, it's it's a really good book, and um, 
Stephen Larson even <laughs> talks about that. Because I, I would love to mention one thing that I must say was a big lesson for me that I wish someone had really told me before I became an entrepreneur is not to get um, so uh, into the shiny objects of courses. You know, I kept saying, oh my goodness, I need to learn how to build funnels. Oh my goodness, I need to learn how to brand myself. And I ended up taking one course after another, after another, after another. And I will be the first to admit that I paid for these courses. Um, I, I can't even tell you how much money I spent on courses only to find out that I really didn't even need it. And it's not just the courses, it's, it's also like products to run your business. I said, oh my goodness, I need to make sure I get this for doing a email, uh, my email marketing and I need this and I need that. And um, half the things you don't even really need. And so um, I, I, I wish, you know, in the beginning, I just kept everything very basic and um, it goes back again to your priorities. Uh, what is that one goal that you need? Well, if it's sales, then surely you don't need to have email marketing. You don't, you know, cause it depends on what type of work you're doing. It, but for me, it was digital marketing and I wasn't doing email marketing for people. So I, I didn't need that. Um, yeah. So that, that, that is one thing that I would like to get the message out there is to definitely, um, have your priority straight and don't get um, too wrapped up in the shiny objects of apps and courses. Just get minim just get what you need to get you to your goal. And as you grow, then you can, for example, if there's a course you need to get you to that next level, then take a course just for that and only that, and then you know continue working on it that way, even with apps. Yeah, that 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 would have been like a huge financial savings for me. <laughs> yeah, so. no, I definitely uh, can appreciate that. You know, I have that shiny object syndrome myself. It seems like a lot of times. So it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly right. It's not just you. I think it's definitely an entrepreneur thing. But uh, yeah, I do find myself chasing a lot of different trails sometimes especially when you know as entrepreneurs we get these new ideas that come in and uh you know we want to follow them and we want to you know get them implemented as quickly as we can yeah and i know one thing that you know has kind of helped me um remedy that somewhat is at least you know when i get those shiny optics coming around that at least write them down so that i don't lose them right and and i don't end up chasing those trails too much <laughs> so but another thing i heard you talk about i wanted to touch on real quick was mentors yeah so yeah, you had said that you know you got a mentor so can you tell us a little bit about you know your thoughts on what would have looked like if you didn't have one? Do you think that having a mentor actually helped you? Um, yeah, no, I feel mentors are so important, especially when you're new and you're not quite sure what to do in the online space, right? So <clears throat> I started with um, uh, one mentor who focused on branding. And um, what what... I really loved about her mentorship. It was with uh, Kimra Luna. And so I took her course, her big course. And what I really, really loved about that course was the, the camaraderie of the group. You know, it was amazing to be with other like-minded entrepreneurs who, who got me, who understood exactly what I was going through. Um, and then Later on, I decided when I wanted to really specialize in social media, um, Rachel Peterson, I took all of her courses and that's when I actually fell in love with digital marketing um, because I started taking her courses and I just started taking actually all of her courses and even joined her mastermind. And that was a game changer because being in her mastermind, you know, you have other like-minded entrepreneurs who are also trying to take their business to the next level. And um, you also get to meet um, people that I may not have met if it wasn't for being a part of the mastermind. Um, what I would love to do next time is to get like a coach, like a one-on-one -on -one coach that's there to like guide me and say, what are your goals, Kim? And step-by-step -step help me to reach those goals. I really do think um, you can't do it alone. It doesn't have to be paid 
mastermind or paid um, mentorship. You could even just, you know, when you're, while you're networking, you'll be surprised how many other people would love to be able to connect with um, entrepreneurs and maybe say, hey, I would like to set up my own mastermind so we can hold each other accountable. Because being in the online space can be lonely. It's just you and your computer. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, 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 and if you don't have um, someone that you can ask questions to, um, it can be very frustrating. And so that's why networking is huge. Getting to meet other entrepreneurs, they don't necessarily have to be in the same market as you. But... Um, it's great to have someone to bounce ideas off of and um, help you to stay focused and to um, help you reach your goals. That, that was huge. So, you know, in that mastermind that you Mm -hmm. had done before, I mean, we're, it's, there are a lot of uh, people that in the same industry as you. Yeah. So I mentioned too, that I was in, well, um, Rachel Peterson is the only mastermind I was in, but um, Kimmer and Luna was like a, a, a course. Um, and yeah, of course they're, they're huge. Um, so the first one, which was Kimra, hers had people from all different types of businesses. There were social media managers, there were coaches, um, of all different types. It could be financial coaches. It could be coaches that help you get out of a traumatic situation. So there were various different types of businesses that were in that group course, Um, and then with Rachel, hers was mostly all just social media managers. So it was all like-minded, um, entrepreneurs. So, um, I got the best of both worlds actually. Nice. (laughs) I'm doing that, but yeah, it wasn't just online. What I really loved was that they had in-person meetings and that was just amazing because you finally get to meet people that you only met online. And when you meet them in person, uh, it takes it to a whole nother level. So that I must say was a real big, big um, help for me in my business in moving the needle. Yeah, that's great. You know, in speaking about the mastermind and having the same people, you know, in your industry and in the same group, you know, sharing ideas and everything. Um, you know, I know that there's a lot of times people will have the thought, you know, there's a lot of fear there because I mean, technically you're, they're talking with your potential competitors. Yeah. So, I mean, did you have that fear or did you find it like more helpful? Yeah. You know what you're going to find there? There are two different, (laughs) actually there's probably more than two, but I'm going to just speak of two people. There are those that um, are competitive and they're not going to want to help you. Right. Right. And then there are those that are like me. I, I feel that there's so many different people that do the same thing. And what makes you unique and, and gives you the competitive edge is you being you. Uh, you know, who, not all clients are going to be att- attracted to everyone. Sure. So I am, of, I am of the belief that there's someone out there for me. You know, you can be a social media manager or a Facebook ad strategist. But your personality is different from my personality. Your experience is different from my experience. And that is what's going to help resonate with the various um, customers. And so one client may be um, drawn to me where they're not drawn to another person. So I don't feel I am. I'm all about helping people. That's the most important thing to me. And I feel that, um, there's no need to be cutthroat. Right. <laughs> um, I think it's more important to help others um, reach their goal. And when you give, um, not that you expect anything in return, but things always, the universe always works things out. It's the law of attraction, right? You give and you do good onto others and somehow it comes back to you in one form or another. Yeah, absolutely. That's really good insight. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Mm-hmm. And I also just really want to thank you for being on the show. We appreciate you spending some time with us here to, you know, just kind of share with us your story and your experiences and how things have gone so far. So if people want to connect with you and learn more, where can they find you? Sure. So I have a um, my website and it's my name, which is uh, Kimaya. And that's spelled K-I-M-A-A-Y-A. Um, 
but I also have a freebie that actually is a audit that will help you determine where your social media, um, if it's actually allowing you to get clients or customers on autopilot. Um, and it's Kim social, it's actually bit.ly. So it's B I T dot L Y forward slash Kim K I M social S O C I A L audit A U D I T and, um, download it and yeah, see where your social platforms are. <laughs> We'll definitely get that in the show notes for you. It's been really great speaking with you. Likewise. Thanks for having me. This was great and fun. (laughs) Yeah, and hopefully I'll see you out there online somewhere. For sure. Okay, bye-bye. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the show today. Don't forget to check the show notes page and make sure you get all the great resources that are available there. And also, if you like the show, please do me a favor and rate and review it. It really helps me get the word out to others just like you. So until next time, I'm wishing you success in your purpose-driven business journey. God bless. 